Hello. Welcome back. We're back. You can, any person that watches, back. The one person. The one, one view we get. Person. Welcome um, back. I hope you're good. You know that we're down a mic, so that's all good. Yeah. We're here to help you with your fitness business in any way we can. Um, any way, Literally in any way, shape or form. So drop a comment if you've got a question for us. Let us know. We never do anything like that, do we? No. We're rubbish at that. We should do like a Q&A version of this. We should do like a, Ooh. you know, drop your questions down below and we'll answer them on a video. Oh, yeah, but we could do that. No one cares enough no, to, no to one do that. Cares. No we'll one cares about us. Probably. So we have to come up with our own ideas. So that's good. Luckily, we know our niche well enough. Yeah. So we don't need to copy content of other people. Oh. <sighs> Segway. And on that. that note. So on that note, today we're going to talk about people in the fitness industry copying other people's content. And when I say word for word, I genuinely mean word for word. Word for word. Um, on one day, I saw three bits of content that were exactly copied. One was a story about um, what was this? It was, an, it was like an anecdote or an, some some fucking story that was like something about a lumberjack. Yeah, I can't remember something about a lumberjack. Were you dreaming about lumberjacks again? I've loved lumberjacks. I yeah. love them. Um, big, that I, I've seen that. I saw a big creator. Man. I saw a big creator talk about it um, months ago, and then I saw someone else just rip it off. Rip it off. I mean, the the fitness creator probably ripped off someone else to start with, but that's not the point. Yeah. Um, it was just yeah. There was no credit given or anything like that on that one. And then there was another one. Um, a content cr- a creator just copied word for word another content creator's video that I'd seen and shared with our mentoring group about three weeks ago. Um, which was funny. Um, what was the other one? Loads. That was the other one. There's another yeah, one. I was copied all the time. Yeah, there's another one I saw. Uh, um, that one might have been the caption that was copied word for word. I can't remember. Well, yours was obviously copied word for word. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, and I made a post about it and I said, look, to me, when I see someone do that, it tells me everything I need to know about their work ethic. And I, and I mean that. Like, I mean it, it tells me everything I need to know about them as a person, what they're prepared to do, where, you know, everything like that. I just think it speaks volumes so much of someone mm-hmm. when they do that. Um, I've had it done to me before where I, um, I remember reading one of my own emails that was sent to me. So I was helping a, a coach out at the time because they wanted to be, to, this was even before we started doing this, oh. before we started doing this properly. Um, wanted help with online coaching um, and all that sort of stuff. And, he wanted help with writing and I was reading to my writing at the time and um, I said, yeah, sure, let me, jo- you know, add me to your email list and I'll give you feedback on emails. And I sent an email out um, about uh, Occam's Razor after watching House. Um, again, very specific thing to talk about, Occam's Razor. Um, it, for those that don't know, Occam's Razor is um, the path of most, most likely, um, the most likely outcome is usually the correct answer. Um, you read that in an email, didn't you? I read that on my email, yeah. So anyway, so I wrote out my email. And the way I write is quite specific and unique to me, yeah, I crap. think. Yeah, crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I can spot it in my life. Um, but you know, the way that I say things, the way that I'd word things, structure lines, sentences, all that sort of stuff. You should always have your own style of writing and, and talking on camera and all that sort of stuff anyway. I remember reading this email that got sent back to me by, by this coach and I was like, I've, read, I've written that. I was like, I, I've written, that's me. And I had to go back through. I had to go back through and find it. And I thought, oh you yeah, thank you. You are the best. To get it. I had to go back to get it. So I went back through my emails. I was like, oh, I've written it exactly like that. And um, it was exactly word for word. Like, and I mean, copied and pasted, word for word. And I simply replied to the guy, um, very disappointed to see this. That's all I replied. And the reply instantly was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like, I feel awful. I feel shit. Blah blah blah. blah. And I just after that was like blocked them not, not speaking to me it was after they'd finished working with me as well obviously um, must have forgotten I was on email list or whatever um, and I never forget the feeling I'll never forget that feeling it, it just felt like I just didn't think people did that to that extent oh they do yeah obviously they do right And I, it was, but I was a bit younger a bit naive maybe I don't know and I never forget the feeling I just felt a bit like for fuck's sake like how many more times has this happened do you know what I mean um so to see people in our industry who are content creators and like helping people with their content do it mm-hmm. really annoys me mm. because you're annoying. the people that should be better. You're the ones that should be creative and should know that that stuff would be really annoying if that happened to you. So to see, I don't mind, I say I don't mind, to see inexperienced coaches do it is one thing. Learn your lesson. We're calling you out on it. Don't be such a fucking idiot. To see content creators who are like, telling people what to do with their content, do it. It's quite scary. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just, again, the um, it's just playing on the laziness, isn't it? It's just um, pe- people... Again, what do they expect is going to happen, though? Look, like, what do you think is going to happen from doing that? What's just, the- do you know what it is? It's because they want to post something and they don't know what to post. It's literally, it's literally what it's coming from. It's like they literally do not know their niche well enough. They don't know who they are yet in the industry and they don't know what to post, but they know that they should post. So they're lazy as fuck. And rather than learning and rather than finding their own voice, it's much easier to just go and copy someone's post. But they'll get nowhere from it. And in the end, they'll get they'll get nowhere yeah. from it. Like, I remember once, remember, remember when I got ripped off with some of the phrases, the yeah. phrasings that I use? Obviously, like, back in the day, I was a little bit more cut through, I guess, than, than I'm now. And a bit more, um, a bit gaudier with like the language I used to use. And I, I used to make a joke. Well, I made an analogy once about um, dieting all week and uh, having a cheap meal as a reward was like washing your car and taking a shit on it as a reward. So I made that as an analogy, quite a niche analogy. And then I also used to talk about, I used to say like, uh, I've got a body like a sock full of custard. I kind of made that up. And then I also... Um, you would make a joke about at the time there was a trend of men wearing leggings in the gym and I used to say I can see where your bell meets your shaft again made that up and uh, I remember one coach literally posted these like three different types of phrasings in the exact same phrases that came like the exact mm-hmm. same and I challenged him on it and he was like oh no it's a coincidence don't fucking give me that it's a coincidence it's like well, you're not the only one who um, thinks that these the the, the um, these ways. It's like, yeah, yeah, but that's like going. I want to write a book about wizards, and then the same pe- the first page being exactly word for word J.K. Rowling. It's yeah. like, yeah, no, the the principles the same. Yeah, fat loss and yeah, cheat meals and yeah, okay, whatever. And you can have an opinion on men in leggings, but the the language wouldn't come out the same. Mm. The language wouldn't come out the same. And it's the same thing. People try to get away, oh, it's just a coincidence. No, it's not. I've had that numerous times from other people in different scenarios. Oh, no, it's just a coincidence. We just posted the same thing. Well, you didn't know, did you? Because it's the same wording. It's the same wording. That's what that's what gives it away. I, I just... Um... Like you said, it happens, and it, it obviously happens. You know, James Corden did it. Ricky Gervais's joke, didn't he? Yeah. He's always writers, probably James Corden's writers. Mm. Um, thought they could get away with that somehow. <laughs> Fucking knows how they thought that was going to happen. Isn't it? Uh, There's one thing doing it to an account that's got two thousand followers. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. another to. Ricky but I think that's the thing is that I think a lot of coaches do it because they think they'll get away with it because yeah. they're like, well, none of my fault. They don't follow me. None yeah. of my fault. They don't want to see it. Which, in my opinion, almost makes it worse. Slide. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, it's like oh, I can get away with it. Then it's like. Whenever we talk to coaches about creating content, we always say, do it your own voice, do it your own way, all this sort of stuff. It's why I'm a big fan of like talking head videos and, co- and, and videos um, for your content and, rather than writing and things like that. Because I feel like it's more, you get your voice across, your point across, you can't copy it as much. It's your own thoughts and feelings a little bit more. Whereas written stuff can be influenced a little bit more. You can copy and paste shit. I've seen people copy and paste my stuff loads of times and put their own spin on it. I put, put my own spin on it. Yeah, of course you do, mate. Yeah, you just copy and paste most of it. Yeah. Um, get it all the time. I just didn't know what to write. So I thought what you wrote was really good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is, it is really good, yeah. 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 Do you know why? Because I've been doing it years and yeah. I've learned about it. And I've not copied it from someone else. Yeah. That's why. It's my own thoughts and feelings. And, and it's that whole thing that I just find really odd as a mentality to it. Mm-hmm. Because again, I come back to the same thing I always do with this, which is it's like your clients going, well, my mate did this diet, so I just copied it. And you always tell your clients, well, don't just copy what your mate did because it's how you know it's going to work for you. It mm-hmm. worked for them. Yeah. Same thing goes for your content, mate. Like, exactly the same thing. And it, it just... The, the problem is, though, is that if they're copying... If they're copying a bit of content, that's actually not like them. So when we get copied, we usually get copied... Um, some of Sometimes through humour, sense of humour, and so on and so forth, right? Because ours is the best. Um, but people copy it. And it will not work out well in the end. Because you can't continue that unless you copy everything. And then mm. you're definitely going to get found out. The, it, it will be a mismatch of what your content actually stands for. And then let's just say if somebody did come into coaching, they would realise that it's completely not you as a person. This is why being authentic and being yourself is the most important thing because then everything's going to be in line. You're going to attract the right type of client. They're going to come in. You're going to get on really well with them and then they're going to stay for a little bit longer and you're going to get them a better result. But if they're coming in because of a person that, you th- that, that you're portraying or you're 
or you're, you're putting out that you are, but you're not actually that. There's going to be a mismatch in that, and you're not going to get the benefit of of what you put in the the reason why you're putting out the content in the first place. So it's just again, it's just lazy and slapdash. And again, the, there's mentorships like preying on these people, like. Yeah mentorships as well obviously giving out templates of content that opportunity for just five people yeah. just five is it is it just five everyone's in you know yeah. all of them well all of them well even the same font you can't even change the font and the arrows the arrows look exactly the same you can't even change that not even but not even bothered like Mental. same same content and the reason why business mentors are doing it is because they know their niche simple yep. They know their niche. Well, fine. That's why they're making money. Their niche is lazy coaches who struggle for creativity and ideas for content and writing. Yep. So I'm going to sell you, well, we do all of your content for you. It's all templated. We give you a template of this. We give you a content calendar of that. You get everything written. They're, they're, and the coaches go, oh, that sounds great. Great shortcut. Okay. Now, coaches, is that going to benefit you long term because you're going to put out the same content as everybody else? And then what are you going to do? Stay within that mentorship forever, have them creating all of your content forever, or inevitably you're going to have to learn to do it yourself. So do that mm. first. And I've used I've used the analogy before about the Aston Martin and the Kia. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna use it again because I've not done it on this YouTube channel, but I think it's quite a good one. It came out my head. Mm. just before you do that just, just, just before you say that like I would say to people you know when clients coaches say about their clients don't follow a meal plan because it doesn't teach you anything yeah yeah, yeah. same thing yeah just, just use thing. your content against you again keep yeah. keep doing that there's always an analogy there it, it's yeah. always the same it's mad though isn't it it is mad yeah. that they can't see it like oh I'm lazy so I just want to get a content template and then like you say you've got to stay with them forever yeah. you're not learning to do it yourself yeah. yeah I see the exact same coaches say don't follow a meal plan it doesn't teach you anything exactly <laughs> fucking mad isn't it so, okay, man. The, the 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 idea behind marketing is standing is standing out in your in in the marketplace amongst mm. competitors. That's the idea of what marketing is: having a unique selling point um, and demonstrating your value to um, your target market. That that's that's essentially what it is. It's telling a that's story. Motivational quotes, isn't it? Motivational quotes. On, yeah. Uh, uh, half chicken for heat wraps. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in under four calories, in under four uh, ingredients, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, chicken and a wrap, probably. That's <laughs> um, probably what it is, isn't it? Here's how to make a chicken feet a wrap. Well, I could have a guess. Um, you know, probably the same way as my mum did it. Um, but, yeah, so my analogy is, is that um, online coaches, you're marketing to very, very different people. And what you should be doing is you should be trying to stand out, not blend in. So why on earth are you posting the exact same fucking content as everybody else? You're, what you're doing is you're looking at every other coach going, oh, they've been, again, you, you see this with Steve. So Dan's client, Steve's gone up to about 300,000 followers in about literally six weeks from 4,000. And Steve's doing really well. And good, now, got a good mentor as well. And, and now every coach uh, is copying Steve. <laughs> yeah, copying his videos now. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing again. You're looking at somebody who is perceived to be being successful at growing their audience and you're... Through trial and error. Through trial and error. Figuring out how to do it best for them. Getting their voice, yep. putting their sense of humor across. All right. Say, same thing. And now you're copying it. You've changed your plan of attack as a business and copying it. Like you are... And even if it goes well, you are doing the same thing as somebody else. Like so, when they stop, you're gonna have to stop. It's like, <laughs> like it, it's just blatant. I've seen the same video four times now. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Just mm. w walking around, taking the taking the plate off yeah, the side, putting yeah. it. Brilliant. It's the walking lunges one for me that I've seen five <sighs> it, times, like it's, four or five times. So, so your idea is is to to stand out, not blend in. So stop copying. And the car analogy that I use, and the reason I don't why, know why it picks a Kia, but whatever. Yeah, in it, it springs to mind. Well. Aston Martin. Um, sure. <laughs> Sure. Um, so a car is essentially a car it does the same thing it, it gets does. you from A to B yep. same as an online coach it's essentially a coach you're probably doing weekly check-ins or it should be you're probably giving some nutritional advice on whatever format you're probably giving some training advice on whatever format it's essentially the same thing you're getting a client from A to B well, I want to be somewhere and I'm starting there it's the same thing hmm. now a, a car wouldn't market themselves in everything like in the exact same way so picture this, man, good looking man, probably, um, tuxedo, sure. No, man in a tuxedo, in a cocktail bar, finishes a fucking cigar, walks outside, the valet hands him his keys, he gets in it, it's an Aston Martin. The picture makes sense, because Aston Martin know who they're trying to target. 
He wouldn't. Tuxedo in a cocktail bar, finishes a cigar, walks outside, car hands him his keys, the valet, the valet hands him his keys, turns up, it's a Kia. It wouldn't happen. Good car. Good car. Dan's gone. <laughs> it, no disrespect to Kia. But it, it just, it's a mismatch. Yeah. And Kia know that, and Aston Martin know that. Kia, the marketing creatives at Kia aren't going, well, Aston Martin's quite a good car. So maybe we should, they're having some success. So maybe we, we should Kia do... a James Bond film? Yeah. Pay a lot of money. Maybe we Bond. should do our branding yeah. like that. Well, it's a different... It's a different... You're, what would fit is family coming out of the house, three kids. Bold. Dog runs off. <laughs> yeah, bold. Bold guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two sausage dogs. Two weeks to carry all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Try <laughs> yeah. carry it. Uh, but family, family trying to get out the door. It's quite obviously a rush. Dog runs off. Fucking bags go everywhere. But they all fit in the Kia, all yeah. the bags. All the bags fit in the all, Kia. Yeah. And then the well. last... The ending shot is the bags fit in Bump like that, boots shut, dogs in, kids Air comes are in, on. drives off. Dogs are quiet, everyone's yeah. Yeah, happy. Brilliant. Yeah. And it fits, it's a family car. Because yeah. Kia know what it's talking about. Aston Martin wouldn't use that one. And it's the same thing, but but coaches are going, well, that one looks uh, the fanciest. Yeah. So Aston Martin saying, so just just do it. Everybody, every, every, every car manufacturer then, just copy Aston Martin. It wouldn't work. Each one knows where they fit. And one is not better than the other. You don't know whether yeah. Kia makes more money than fucking Aston Martin. N nobody does. No one knows what they do. But uh, they, what they do know is they know what their unique selling points are and you know who's going to buy a Kia. It's the same thing as a coach. You kn know what your unique selling points are and know who's going to buy you. Yeah. The mad thing as well for coaches in those, both those scenarios is that they also talk about their product in this uh, they go it's got four wheels yeah and it's got a steering wheel and a handbrake and it's got a satellite navigation system in it and it's got a boot that opens yeah. all those both those cars got exactly the same things and that's how coaches sell their coaching they don't sell the experience and why it's right for that niche and what it's going to get you and how it's going to make you look and how it's going to make you feel they just mm -hmm. go exactly the same things like that just mm -hmm. as, a, as a side note to that is that's when they go yeah you get a weekly check-in and a training plan and you get yeah. a you know you get your an app and you get a recipe book fucking brilliant every every fucker does that that's the thing how's it gonna how's it how's that different though in any way shape or form whereas you know or I would imagine driving Aston Martin feels very much, very, very, very much uh, an improvement upon driving a Kia. I would imagine that. It's, it's right? the, it makes you feel better. Makes you're you look better. A, yeah, you're telling a different story yeah. to the. I'm playing in. The person who buys an Aston Martin is going to be of a um, a particular financial status. Playing on the fact that the guy, that the guy or girl, let's let's say, playing on the fact, but mainly guys, probably mainly guys, Aston Martin because of James Bond. Playing on the fact that they want a elevated social mm -hmm. status they want a little bit of ego a little bit of confidence derived from it but a little bit showy offy they want to feel as though they're perceived as a successful um individual how, how they're much? playing on that they know they know they know that and they're that's the, the their brand feel mm. that's what they're selling they're selling the status of being an aston martin driver demonstrating a guy in a tuxedo, in a cocktail bar, the very fact of a valet handing him the keys, they're demonstrating the status. That's what you're getting when you buy an Aston Martin. You get A to B in the Kia. You get A to B in an Aston Martin. You get A to B in whatever. You, you're demonstrating the status. In a Kia, you're demonstrating the practicality. You're saying, if you've got a family with three kids, a dog, loads of luggage, and you are doing miles, get a Kia. You're demonstrating the practicality and the versatility and the family element of a Kia, the reliability, the safety features, knowing that a family owner wants to keep his fucking kids and wife safe. Kia. Aston Martin, it's rapid, reckless, dangerous, not a family car. It's must, knowing the benefits of the two. Must trade in the Kia for Aston Martin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Improve right. social status. Yeah. <laughs> that Confidence. Yeah. yeah. I love a bit of all that. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just an Aston Martin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I stick to the Kia, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me. But, yeah. Fucking all that is a lot, isn't it? But, like, it's, it's, it's true. Like, and again, just to touch on this, Alex Hormoz did another video about this. Um, on his Instagram, he did about cars. He was talking about cars and about how... Probably copied it off me, has he? Probably copied it off you, yeah. He didn't didn't use Aston Martin Kia, but he said um, he basically did, they they did um, he found some footage of someone going around interviewing people, how much money they had in their bank account at the time, and then what their car payments were per month. And he was going around and he was just like he's like just shaking his head like this, like oh my god, these people. And he's just like these people have got less than two grand in the bank account, and their their car payments. And obviously, they live in paycheck to paycheck, and their car payments are like six hundred dollars a month. And he's just like these people are so stupid. Like mm. that's not how you 
that's not how you attain wealth. That's not how you do all these things. You buy, and he literally said, he said he turned up to an event once with a million pound in the bank mm. and he was in a, a, a banged up Prius. And he was like, and someone said to him like, I thought, I thought you, you were rich. Like, I saw, and, I saw and he was like, lot. yeah, but don't judge me by a car, judge me by a bank account. Yeah. And everyone's judging people based on that. Like, he said a car and all this sort of stuff. And again, online coaches are really bad for this. They've all got MacBooks mm. in the coffee shop with a picture of them on the Starbucks paying five pounds for a cup of coffee because it's a status thing. Mm. Reality is they've got four clients and they don't know what the fuck they do on social media. Mm. Neither they're not there. It's like me with the Kia, right? Like, again, I drive a Kia, right? Because it's cheap. I'm not, I'm not, I'd rather save my money elsewhere because in the future, I do want to buy a nice car and I will buy a nice car when the time comes. And Mike buys me one because he's more, more money than me. So more money than the sense. <laughs> this guy. Um, but no, like you just have different values. Like, but, but also it's, it's, we've talked about this before. It's like, don't judge someone based on what they promote on Instagram because they, they've spent that money on that. Like, mm-hmm. How do you know someone hasn't got it in the bank saved, yeah. you know? And it's, again, like Alex or Moses touched on it there. And it's, it's the same thing with this. Is it's the same thing with online coaches is you have to remember what you're selling here. And is you're selling the dream to someone is that they're going to attain this amazing physique. If you are someone that does photo shoots, if you're in photo shoot shape, right? You can probably charge a bit more and you probably will have more accountability from your clients. You probably will have people a bit more driven, data driven. They will be able to look at their stuff. They will track more stuff for you. Like I had to have this conversation with a female client the other day. She was getting their clients to track a ridiculous amount of things because she'd previously been coached by a, a, a bodybuilding coach who was high level looking at stress, sleep and all this sort of stuff. I was like, yeah, but your clients don't care about that. And she was sending them a video before they signed up on um, showing them how she coaches them. And I was like, you're putting them off mm-hmm. because they don't want to do any of that. They just want the end goal. Mm-hmm. Sell them the dream of the end goal. And then to get there, they're going to have to put some work in, of course, and all that sort of stuff. But again, that's with your content. You should be promoting this end goal and what it looks like and the dream and the future pace of what that would look like. Not the, well, yeah, basically like everyone's got, everyone gets a meal plan, everyone gets a training log, everyone gets an app. It's like, mm-hmm. fuck, you know, people wonder why they're not getting sales through the door. Yeah. Um, it's, I think I made about three different points there, but it, it's all relevant. Give it's it all the, the bone. It's all the same thing. Give it a bone. See what you see, yeah. Yeah. It's um, all the same thing um, with that. And it's just knowing who you're targeting, knowing your target market and cars. going, is what I'm doing helping my target market get closer to where they want to be? Cars. Cars. Yeah. Just say cars, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so copying content. It's not big, it's not clever. Um, was it? Oh, I can't say that. Probably not. I, that was going to be a wicked face joke, but I can't say that because it'd be copying. <laughs> yeah. And it's not PC. Yeah, but you're actually giving him the con- yeah. the credit, so it's better. Um, yeah, so don't copy your content. Um, it doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't get you anywhere. Um, doesn't matter if you're a Kia, doesn't matter if you're an Aston Martin, doesn't matter. Um, just know what you are, who you're for. That's how you're going to win at the end of the day. It's all about winning. And losing. And drawing these days. Could be anything. Don't discriminate. <laughs> Woke.